Courtrooms can be stressful places and then seeing the most charming of ladies there, that just blows our mind. Keep watching. Number 5. Amber Pereira Amber Pereira asked for a second chance. Her victim's family wanted her to spend the rest of her life in prison. A judge decided on half a century. Circuit Judge Christopher Sabella sentenced Pereira, 31, to 50 years in state prison for driving drunk and causing a crash on the Leroy Selman Expressway that killed Luis and Rita Felipak of Tampa and their eight-year-old daughter, Georgia. Just before handing down the sentence, Sabella made reference to a jail cell recorded after Pereira's arrest and played in court by prosecutors in which she told a family member, my life is ruined. Yes, ma'am, Sabella said, your life is ruined, but you also ruined a lot of lives and ended three lives. Let's watch. Did you witness Ms. Pereira have a seizure on that day? Yes. This is a woman who left her work in the beginning of rush hour and drove across the Selman Expressway at over 90 miles an hour, running into the victim's car, which poses a grave threat of harm to the community if she is released again. Your life is ruined, but you also ruined a lot of lives and ended three lives. Number four, Alondra Marquez. A woman who drove drunk causing a crash that killed a man on a freeway near Balboa Park received the maximum sentence in court. Alondra Marquez, 22, was sentenced to 13 years and four months in prison for the crash that killed the passenger and injured another while they were traveling in a lift car. The deadly crash happened on March 23, 2019 on State Route 163 near Balboa Park. Witnesses told California Highway Patrol officers that both cars in the crash went off onto the right shoulder. Marquez pleaded guilty to gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated and DUI causing injury for the crash that killed 40-year-old San Francisco resident Jiao Pham and severely injured Pham's friend Andy Lin. The two were in San Diego for a wedding. It was revealed in court the victims and drunk driver had both been at the same bar, Riches, in Hillcrest earlier that night. While the victims opted to use a ride-hailing service, Marquez rejected rides home from several friends in favor of getting behind the wheel, according to Deputy District Attorney Callie Bright. The prosecutor also said that the defendant's blood alcohol level was more than three times the legal limit at the time of the crash, and that she was traveling at speeds over 100 miles per hour. Several members of Marquez's family were in court, telling the judge she is a good person despite the crash and asking the judge to grant a lesser sentence. I am deeply sorry this should have never happened, said the defendant's sister Alexa Marquez. I understand the victim's frustrations and I would be mad too. I honestly don't know how to act, but please don't take it out on my sister. Let's watch. Your actions that night took my partner, my world, my everything. Driving 109 miles an hour on the 163 where the speed limit is 55. Everyone deserves a second chance. I honestly wouldn't know how to act, but please. <laughs> Don't take it out on my sister. Although I don't remember, I know, I realized that I really messed up. Clearly, I took someone's life, unfortunately. God, I just want you guys to know that I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm sorry. I know you guys are hurting. Number three, Kayla Mendoza. A woman convicted of driving the wrong way on the Sawgrass Expressway and slamming into another car head-on, killing two women inside, was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Kayla Mendoza, 21, was also sentenced to six years of probation. Mendoza pleaded guilty in February and apologized to the families of Marissa Catronio and Caitlin Nicole Ferrante, who were killed in the November 2013 crash. Mendoza told both families that she would trade spaces with them if she could. Before a judge decided Mendoza's sentence, Mendoza read a letter to the families in court. I think about them every day and I regret my choices every day, Mendoza read. I don't remember deciding to drive, so I can't even tell you what was going through my mind when I made that decision. I have no excuses for anything I've done. I just ask for forgiveness. Ferrante's mother, Christine Ferrante, also took the stand. Change has to start with someone and somewhere, and I'm asking you to set it now so that no other parent has to sit here like I do today, she said. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a toxicology report showed that Mendoza had a blood alcohol level of 0.15%, nearly twice the legal limit of 0.08%, and traces of marijuana in her system. When her car slammed into the car carrying the 21-year-old women, Mendoza posted Too Drunk to Care on Twitter just hours before the crash. Court documents filed in a civil lawsuit against Mendoza show that she spent about $65 on alcohol before the crash, even though she was underage at the time. Mendoza suffered fractures to her femur, fibula, and tibia in the crash. The judge also permanently revoked Mendoza's driver's license and ordered her to pay the cost of the prosecution and investigation. Let's watch. I don't feel that 
there's any way that I could really express my apology. I'm just hurting. <laughs> Because the families don't feel that I'm sincere when I apologize. Daughters don't have the option of saying, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in an urn. I don't want to be in a casket. Leave us alone. Leave the Band-Aid on our wound and let it heal, which it never will. Number two, Jessica Arojo. Jessica Arojo smiled through her tears at friends and family as she came to a Miami-Dade courtroom to learn her punishment for DUI manslaughter. The widow of the man she killed wept as well. Arojo, now 26, was blind drunk one April when she blew a light in southwest Miami-Dade and T-boned a Toyota, killing 48-year-old Najee El Kadi, who was on his way to work. Arojo apologized to her victim's family. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the pain I have caused your family. I'm sorry for the pain I've caused my family and everybody that cares about me, she said. Her attorney asked the judge for leniency to sentence Arojo to less than the minimum state guidelines require. I think she can make a difference, but she can't make it in prison, Judge, attorney Justin Beckham said. A cousin spoke up for Arojo, saying he knows the pain she has inflicted because he is a friend of Javier Perez, the popular high school principal who lost both legs to a drunk driver who ran him over on a baseball field. I witnessed firsthand a reckless driver veer off the road and crash into a dear friend of mine, said Andreas Rodriguez, struggling to control his emotion. His legs were amputated from the knee down. Friends describe Arojo as someone who struggled with addiction and has since overcome it, saying she is a good person with a good heart. Assistant State Attorney Benjamin Gellis said, Arojo showed her true character the night she was arrested last year, with a blood alcohol level nearly three times the legal limit, high on pot, and with cocaine in her car, cursing police and hospital workers. Let's watch. I understand and sympathize with your pain, but I too have suffered an immense I don't think that she should get any leniency because she's young. Because you know something, I'm young and I make smart decisions. She'll be adjudicated guilty at this time. Number one, Amy Marie St. John. A Phoenix woman who was drunk when she drove the wrong way on a freeway off-ramp and caused a chain reaction accident that killed a taxi driver near Old Town was sentenced to 17 years and eight months in state prison. Amy Marie St. John, 44, pleaded guilty in November to gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated and DUI causing injury. Superior Court Judge Louis Hanoyan said the case was a tragedy for both the victims and defendants' families. There isn't any way that I can fix anything, said Judge Lewis. He noted that St. John, who had a prior DUI from Arizona, had been on notice not to mix alcohol and drugs. Hanoyan said that because of the defendants' actions, taxi driver Anthony Minassi was dead and another man was seriously injured. That's hard to live with, the judge said, noting St. John was not a monster. She did not intend to drive onto the freeway and kill somebody, the judge added. Stizazu also told the defendant, I want you to know I do forgive you. Let's watch the shocking moment. You took away a loving, caring father from three beautiful little children. My five-year-old said to me, Mom, I wish Dad was alive, at least until I finish kindergarten. You caused so many people unbearable pain and grief. You murdered Antone Manassi. It saved my life, and the only reason why I turned around is because he, he did say back up. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time. See you.